G'day, I'm on board a Qantas A380 in first class, heading to the sixth round of the F1 season in Miami via Los Angeles. Now this is an epic trip for me, from go to woe, 36 plus hours. And where did this trek start? Perth. Well this marathon trip kicks off with a uh, trip out to the airport at 4.36 and then a flight to Sydney. Well, it's 5.26 now, and check-in was uh, a little longer than normal because I had to put in some information about where I was staying in America for the American authorities. This is peak hour at Perth Domestic Terminal and as you can see it's just full of FIFO workers fly in fly out working on the mines and they come dressed ready to start work the moment they land in uh, their destination. Well I'm in 3A on this QF642 flight to Sydney it's four hours and five minutes and uh, look, the seat's okay. And certainly, if this was a US airline, this would be typically what you'd get in business. This seat does have about a uh, six inch or 15 centimeter recline. It has a footrest that comes out. It has controls for the in-flight entertainment system down here. And yes, there is in-seat power. Well, my screen didn't work in 3A, so they've moved me up to 1C and uh, the screen here is perfect. We didn't have to wait long for breakfast and I chose the muesli with the sourdough and the fruit. Well that is the first of three flights out of the way on this epic trip. Well, I've landed into the domestic airport and I've got to go over to the international and that means heading over here to gate 15. It was about a six minute bus trip over to the international side. Now it's off to the first class lounge for a good look. Hello sir. Afternoon. What's your name? Nestor. Yes, you're famous. <laughs> My wife said to look out for you. Oh. You were on the Qantas video. Sa safety videos, yeah. Oh. Hi, my name is Nestor from the Qantas First Class Lounge in Sydney. Welcome to Hollywood! <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Well, this is Qantas's flagship lounge. It's in Sydney Airport, but there's no better lounge in Australia than this with Qantas. It's been a while since I've been here, I think probably two to three years. Architecturally, it's quite beautiful with these lovely wooden cutouts that run the whole length, and I'm guessing it's probably a good 100 metres from that end to the other end. But perhaps it's the food that people are most interested in. And behind me here is a live kitchen. Neil Perry is the chef for Qantas. And his menu here is inspiring and tasty. I had the pappardella for lunch and started it off with the salt and pepper squid. If you're a wine buff, you'll be delighted with the wines on offer. Uh, spirits too, good selection. And get a look at that. Southern Comfort's available here too. Now if you're wondering who gets access to this lounge, it is First class passengers travelling on a Qantas flight. It is also Platinum and Platinum One members. Pretty much it's limited to the frequent flyer in Qantas's network. Is it worth coming up here? You bet. It's just a great lounge. Two days ago I got an email from Qantas uh, saying, would you like a spa treatment? Because you're here for a number of hours. And I said, yeah. So I'm here in the spa now. I selected a facial, so let's go. Well, that was a very nice 20 minute distraction. I had uh, a facial with, I think, about 10 different products. God knows whether it's going to do me any good, but it was a, a lovely 20 minutes in there. I didn't fall asleep unusually. I was interested in getting a massage on top of that and paying for it, but they said no, only one treatment per person, and it's complimentary. So that's the spa here in the Qantas First Class Lounge. They are serving champagne up there, and I've got a glass or half a glass of Lalia, which I've never heard of before. Let's have a look. Uh, it's not as soft as, say, a Dom Perignon, but I'm sure it's nowhere near the price either. I'm sure it goes well with lots of things. After three and a bit hours in that beautiful first class lounge, I'm now heading off to gate number nine for my 13 and a bit hour flight to LA. Welcome to gate nine. This is always a real bun fight because there's something like 480 people all getting on this plane at the same time. So my gosh, this is a monster aircraft and it's right in front of us here. Have a look at this. Welcome on board. This is um, a quite an interesting aircraft, this one. This is, uh, yes, it's an A380, but it's Qantas' first A380. It's called Nancy Bird. So this aircraft has been in the Middle East since COVID. Uh, 
um, they've only just brought it back. It's only been flying for a couple of weeks. It's been completely refurbished inside. And when COVID hit, they had to put their A380s in anywhere they could find a hangar. So straight up, how does it compare with the Emirates suite? It's not as good. The actual seat and the um, suite are 16 odd years old, I'm sure, but this has all been refurbished with new upholstery and it feels beautiful. And one of the great things about this flight is the bedding. It's just world class. Now, coming up, Qantas is getting new first class suites on their A350s. It's going to be a world beater. Have a look at this. And even their business class gets a dramatic upgrade as well. I think that first class suite, and there'll only be six of them on that A350, will actually go close to rivaling Singapore and Etihad's first class apartments. But they're not due out until the end of next year. We boarded this flight just after 5 p.m. Sydney time, which is 3 p.m. Perth time. And I'm feeling pretty good. There's a two hour time difference between Perth and Sydney. We've gone two hours ahead. But when we go to LA, we're going to be going backwards a full day. We cross the international date line, and by the time I get to Miami, I'll be on 12 hours difference from Perth. But still, this flight will be an absolute joy. So let me tell you a little bit about this suite. There's a set of controls here, dated, yes. That operates a good size screen over here, which folds back out of the way. There's a little fold down tray here where Kate has poured me a champagne and given me some nuts and olives. The seat itself pivots about 15 degrees to the right here and it's very private when I sit here I can't see anyone else and they can't see me we have in-seat power yes a very big dining table which is great when somebody joins you for dinner lovely recessed lighting and a screen that drops down here which would allow me to talk to my fellow passenger behind if you are like me you will love amenities kits this is the Qantas amenities kit brush and toothpaste earplugs a nice Martin Grant bag eye shades pair of socks three small tubes of stuff unlike Emirates there is no aftershave shaving solution there's no underarm there's no tissues and really when you're paying this much money for first class I think they need to do a whole lot better to me it's just all cutting cost nope, uh, wheel, front wheels have lifted off and it is quite beautiful okay well I'm in one of two toilets up the front of the cabin it's a sizable toilet it's not fantastic it's not like Emirates obviously but um, it does have a window, that's nice. There is an amenities drawer in here that does have razors and shaving cream and deodorant and makeup pads and even earbuds. Had to make a mad dash back to my seat because the seatbelt light went on while I was in the men's room. But I've just come up the stairs and there is a quite lovely little lounge here but it's very dark, romantic even, and behind the curtain is business class. Behind first class downstairs is premium economy. This little seating area is available to business class and first and there's a, a wet bar over there which will be stocked a little later on. Now of course on Emirates, and I will mention Emirates a lot because I think these are very similar products, um, Emirates you can get a whole whack of caviar. Here we get a little taste. Delicious. And this is the second one the green pea one. Mm, that's not so good. The dinner menu is uh, quite extensive and I started off with some beautiful sourdough bread and then had some skull prawn tortellini and next up I've got a steak. Dinner was finished off with uh, some pie and ganna cheddar from Tasmania and then a lovely lemon tart. I'd probably give the meal seven and a half out of ten. I think we're about two hours away from crossing the international date line so I'm going to be asleep then. Uh, when I wake up, hopefully I'm a couple of hours outside of LA and uh, feeling refreshed. There's a very comfy memory foam mattress and a beautiful lightweight quilt and two mega pillows. So having taken one sleeping tablet, I think I should be fine for at least six hours sleep. I can report that I had about seven hours sleep and I was grateful for that. And there's more food with breakfast arriving. I've started off with some fruit salad and yogurt. <music> comfortable 12 hours and 40 minutes on that beautiful A380. Now it's a walk to immigration and then customs and I'm going to go and see a friend in Hollywood. After a 50 minute wait in line I finally got through, um, took me 90 seconds with immigration, now I'm down here to pick up some luggage. Check-in was good, quick and now I'm going to get a Uber or an Uber but unfortunately 
they don't come to the terminal, you have to get on a shuttle bus to take you to the ride app area, which is always a pain in the ass and adds extra minutes to a journey. I'm out here at the Uber pickup area and you can't book your Uber until you actually arrive here. And then they tell you which of these many stands. And I've got 22C. I just spent a couple of hours in a car heading to and from Hollywood to see a friend and it was well worthwhile. But I've returned for my third and final flight from LAX today and this time I'm heading with JetBlue to Miami. Now why did I pick JetBlue? I'll tell you, because they've got a sleeper seat on a domestic in business class and that's pretty unusual in the US. Here we go, final flight of three and I think I've been going for uh, 31 hours now. Still going all right. Welcome aboard. I'm going in where you are. Oh, well, come on in. Thank you. My pleasure. This is JetBlue. We're on A321 aircraft. This seat is really quite lovely. It has a small storage area here to my right. There's a nice screen. I get the leg room right in the middle. The two seats in front of me are either side, left and right. All the seat controls are down here, along with a rather trendy looking remote control. And it has a door. That closes across here but I can't work out how it works. And this is a bag of linen from Tuft and Needle. Now it's not going to be quite as lavish as what I had on the Qantas flight but there is a beautiful pillow and a blanket. Straight up I really love this aircraft. I think it's just such a nice refreshing change for a business class in the US. Oh and this seat being the single one is called the throne seat because you have these high bits here I guess you feel a little bit like a king or a queen if you're sitting here. I hope to do more sleeping and sitting. We are 29 minutes away from landing. Did I get any sleep? None. The people behind had a very rowdy kid for the first 90 minutes, so that put paid to the sleep. But I did have the panini, which was excellent, along with the gelato. And then the crew came around and gave us all a little bag of fish and a handwritten note, which I thought was a lovely touch. And that's definitely one of my favourite airlines in the US. Just a shame I didn't get any sleep. And it's worth noting too that if you book it from LAX, there is no lounge. So you are pretty much out in the open. Now, thankfully I cleared customs and immigration in LA, so it's now just straight out, grab my bag and go. Waiting for my Uber driver, and then I think it's about a 35 minute drive to the Hilton Aventura. And it's quite wet here tonight. We have water about um, a foot deep out here. This is crazy. So I'm checking in at uh, 6 a.m. I ha always have a driver with it, I'll get turned up as a no-show. So as usual, you get bumped off the system, so it just takes a bit longer to check in. But the room is, as expected, quite lovely. Sizeable, um, beautiful furnishings, and I think I've got a view, yeah, I've got a view of the shopping centre across here. So I have been going now for 37 hours, and so I think that's well enough time for me to now have a snooze in a proper bed. So I'll invite you to have a look at all my other content here, and like the video if you haven't done so, and of course, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and stay passionate. And started it off with the, and started it off with this, what do I have?